This is God's plan for your life. And James doesn't want us to settle for anything less. James isn't asking us to set unreasonable goals we can't reach. It's a great promise and a great challenge. Now compare that with the world's standards. What's the world asking us? We get bombarded from the world. Get more stuff. More stuff, that'll make you happy. Get that 3D LCD TV. More stuff. Go with the flow, don't worry about things. Don't get involved. Blame others for your failures, your boss, your wife, friend, your minister. The qualities that James mentions are not optional goals for us. They are what we will be striving for if we're Christians. Strong challenge, isn't it, for a time when you're feeling maybe beaten up by the economy, maybe have family issues or health issues. James is saying <coughs> you need to do these things. But what about all the bad stuff that happens to me in life? My friends and families. How do I cope? Where, why am I getting these trials? Look back to verse 3. It says, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. James tells us that perseverance is what does the work of making you mature and complete. And it's developed by you being tested. Is there an easier way to Christian maturity? Boy, I wish there sure was, because I've never smelled it. I'm afraid not. The verb to know was to mention the Greeks, the knowledge of facts. But to the Hebrews, it meant more than that. It meant the application of that knowledge to their life. So James is simply telling us, really, we do not know from experience that testing does build perseverance, but we should. We, we don't want to accept this and like it take its natural course in our lives and let it mature us. A Christian is not a Christian unless this faith is tested and proved, implies James. And yet we try to avoid being tested. The kids can tell you they hate testing. We hate testing as adults. We don't like it when we're tested. But James says, not for the Christian. We should accept the test. It's a measure of our faith and our maturity. Do we see it building perseverance? Or do we allow the testing to make us bitter and turn away from our Lord? How do you respond to testing? Think back to a recent trial, big or small, with which you had to deal. How did you feel about it? What kind of thoughts went through your head? What was your attitude? Like that night that Dan didn't show up, I'll tell you what was in my head. Where the heck is he? He's making me late for the prom. That's what was in my head. I think back to that night and how much I've matured since then. Do you get ang angry? Are you frustrated? Disappointed? Do you separate from people or separate from God? This leads me to my next question. How do we respond? What does James say? Remember I said when you seek answers, you have to be prepared to follow them and respond to them. So what does James say? If we look at verse 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many times. What? James, brother of Jesus, are you drunk? Yeah. Pure joy? To face trials? And James says right back to me, but I have you. Remember the statements you agreed to in the beginning of this message? James uses them now in the actual culmination of his argument. 
Remember you agree, joy is a good emotion, one to be desired. Fulfilling God's plan and desire for your life will bring you joy. God's plan for your life is that you become more mature and complete in your faith. Let's look back over these few three verses and see how James has taught us. If joy is a good thing and fulfilling God's plan for my life brings joy, and God's plan for my life is for me to become more mature and complete, and that can only be done through perseverance, which is developed through testing, but proving on my faith in trials, then how should I view those trials? James says, with joy. So considering trials of joy, which would seem ridiculous at first, seem logical after you look at it. And he's not just telling us, he's commanding us to do that as Christians. Most of you heard my trials of last year when I was sick for seven months. I actually said I was studying James, I was looking at Job. And people would say, how are you doing? I'd say, okay. And some people would say, do you find joy in your trial? And I'd say, no. I don't find any joy in not being able to eat. I don't find any joy in not being able to sleep. I didn't find any joy in what I was going through. And then people would say, well, if you lost your faith, Say no. It's brought me closer to God. Although I don't know the joy part of this, like you say, 